All right, team. How is everybody doing today? Good. Oh, good. All right, well, we'll get going right away here after that uh, struggle it seems a lot of us had to get on today. Glad you still made it. Let's just have a quick look around your exercise space. Make sure there's nothing to step on or trip over. Um, have a quick check in with your energy levels and your breathing today. Um, remember, if at any point during the class um, you need to get control of your breathing, the recovery position is either hands on the thighs or down to the forearms and keeping that head and chest up. And I encourage you all to maintain your breathing pattern of breathing out through pursed lips. That's going to help a whole lot. All right. We're going to get right into it today. Let's actually start off with uh, breathing in and breathing out through pursed lips. And let's aim for three seconds in, three seconds out. And it's okay if you um, spend more or less time there. Do what you can. So breathing in, two, three. Out through pursed lips, two, three. Breathe in, two, three. Out, two, three. Breathe in, two, three. Out, two, three. Maintain that breathing pattern. This time, lift one arm up, two, three, down, two, three, other arm in, two, three, out, two, three, other arm in, two, three, out, two, three, in, two, three, out, two, three. Now hands on your belly. We're going to pull the hands apart. One, two, three, out, two, three. Breathe in, two, three, out, two, three. Breathe in, two, three, Two, three, last one in. Two, three, out. Two, three. Good. Now keep up that breathing pattern for as long as you can. So keep maintaining that slow, steady breath. And let's just start lifting up one heel at a time. So lift your heel up, down, up, down. We'll get into that pattern, whether you're seated or standing. And once you've gotten into the pattern, we're going to add our arms into the mix. So let's push them forwards and back, forwards and back. Good. So both arms moving together. As you lift up and down, one heel at a time. And maintain that breathing pattern as best you can, depending on how much exertion you are doing. That breathing pattern might have to get a little bit shorter, but still breathing out through pursed lips, in and out, in and out. Awesome. All right, your arms go out, back, side, back, out, back, side, back. There we go. Out in front, back, side, back, front, back, side, back. There we go. Great work, everybody. All right, so remember that pattern. 
And we're going to change it to just one arm working at a time. And we're going to do opposite arm to opposite leg. And either you are lifting your heel up or you can lift up your whole foot. And it's going to look like this to start up as you push your arm forward, back, and then switch. Don't worry, we are going to make it a little bit more interesting. Get used to the pattern first. Out and up and switch. Out and up and switch. Good. All right, now your right arm reaches forward, left arm out to the side. Right arm forward, left arm out to the side. Forward, side, forward, side. And maintain that breathing pattern. Okay. We are going to switch our hands in three, two, and left hand forward, right arm out to the side, left arm forward, right arm out to the side, forward, side, forward, side, forward. Side, forward, side. There we go. Boy, it's getting fun now, gang. <laughs> She's fine right now. Good. Keep up that pursed lip exhale. And rest there. Okay, remember, if you feel like you need to catch your breath, just stop for a moment. You can go into your recovery position, whatever is best for you and your body. Otherwise, we're stepping forward one foot at a time. Keeping the toes up, so touch your heel out in front of you. Good. And hold your arms straight out in front of you. Think about trying to keep your shoulders still. So don't let them move with your feet. Keep them absolutely still. Like you're balancing a broomstick across your hands. And if the imagery helps you, feel free to cut the broomstick. <laughs> but don't move your arms or that broomstick's gonna fall. How about flying on it? <laughs> Not Halloween. <laughs> What are you trying to say, Barry? <laughs> All right, now step and point your toes forward. So touch your toes up. You get that bit of a stretch down the front of your shin. And we're going to hold our arms straight up. Now, overhead does not feel good for your neck or shoulders. You can keep the elbows bent or you can maintain straight out in front. Okay, so figure out what is challenging yet doable for you. Excellent. You touching those toes out in front of you. Keep up that pursed lip exhale. And rest. There we go, team. How's everybody feeling so far? Warming up. Good. I see some thumbs up, which is awesome. Perfect, perfect. All right, our next one that we're going to do is we're going to lift up a knee <coughs> or leg, and you're going to touch across. <coughs> so lift up your leg and touch across your body. Keep that back nice and tall. Don't lean forward with that touch across. So make your arm and leg do all the work. Good. 
Good job, team. Touch your knee across your body. Touch across, touch across, touch across. There we go. Good, so we got a couple more seconds here and then we're gonna lift our arms straight up. Three, two, and your arm lifts up and the same side knee lifts up, down and up. So we don't often get, we spend a lot of time getting the opposite limbs working together. It's good to change it up once in a while and get the same side limbs working together. <coughs> Maintain your breathing pattern, everybody. So keep breathing out through pursed lips. Good, remember you are in charge of your intensity. And this is your workout. If you need to work a little harder to feel good, do it. If you need to take more breaks, do it. It's up to you to make this your workout so that you finish your exercises feeling good, not exhausted. And rest. Good. So from here, Get back into your breathing pattern. If you need to keep moving a little bit to help recover, please feel free to do so. If you need to get down into that recovery position to recover, please feel free to do so. All right, we're gonna do something really fun next. I know I say that about a lot of what we do, but this time I extra mean it. So get your feet stepping in a pattern. So think of a one, two, one, two, whatever is your pattern. And if it works better for you to just lift up one heel at a time rather than march, perfect. Do what works for you. All right. So one, two, one, two, think about what your rhythm is. Let's get your arms reaching out in front and back. Out in front and back. So that's not the fun part. This is the fun part. Keep your feet going at the same speed. And it might be helpful to have in your brain kind of that running one, two, one, two. What your arms are going to do is move double time. <laughs> so now, can your arms move a little bit faster than your feet? There we go. So your feet are still doing their one, two, one, two, and your arms might be going one, two, one, two, one, two. Good. And get everything going the same speed again. One, two, one, two, one, two. And now we're going to get your arms keeping pace. One, two, one, two. Okay. And your feet are going double time. And in a one, two, one, two. Good. So can you get your feet and legs moving double time while your arms keep going? at that smooth, steady pace. Whoo! <laughs> and rest. Whew. Great job.
job, everybody. Well, didn't I tell you that was extra fun? It was. <laughs> you forgot to tell us that. We're going to do a couple more of those just with a different pattern. Awesome. So be prepared. All right. Have we had enough of a rest to recover our breathing? No. Some of you know, some of you don't. So remember, this is your exercise. If you need longer, it is important to catch your breath. That means you'll be able to do more work um, and it'll feel a lot better. So take extra time if you need it. Our next pattern is we're just gonna step our feet out, out, in, in. Out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in. Good. Take your hands and roll them over top of one another. So think of that one, two, one, two. And honestly, when we're just starting out, everything going at the same speed, you just let your body decide. Your body will tell you what your kind of default speed is. So just let it do its, whatever its default settings is, you go for it. And I'm quite surprised no one tried to tell me that their default setting was just resting. I feel we're missing a couple people today. All right, team, keep your feet moving. One, two, one, two, and get your arms going faster. But keep your feet going. One, two, one, two. This is a tough one. And slow it down. Default setting, one, two, one, two. Change directions of your hands. One, two, one, two. All right, you should know what's coming next. Let's get throwing double speed, ready and go. Out, out, in, in, or one, two, one, two, one, two. As those arms keep up a steady pace. Now going at different speeds is a type of coordination. It's really good for your brain. Kind of having to separate your attention to two different parts of your body. One part is dedicated to the slower, steady rhythm, and the other part of your attention is focused on going fast. And you have to get those two parts working together. And yes, nice work, everybody. We're going to do one more. <laughs> Catch that breath. Good. So for your last pattern, next and last pattern, get your feet a little bit out in front of you. And we're gonna end up pulling one foot back at a time. And if you're standing, you're just trying to kick your bum. Okay, so get into that slow pattern. And then our arms are gonna reach one up overhead at a time. So get your arm and leg working together first. One, two, 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 good. Ready? Keep your one, two pattern with your legs and Get your arms working double time. Good. 
There we go. Woo! Deep breathing out through pursed lips. And slow it back down. Completely rest if you need to. If you need to just catch your breath, go into that recovery position, please do so. All right, and now your feet are going to do double time. Keep your arms going one, two, one, two, and go. Great job, everybody. Keep breathing out through pursed lips. Good. And, and rest. Well done, everybody. Get back into that breathing pattern. And even if you're panting a little bit, that purse lip breathing is allowed to sound like a right. Even when we're kind of huffing and puffing. We still need to breathe out through pursed lips so that we don't feel as breathless and it helps us catch our breath back. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to get into a bit of strength exercises using just a weight. Just you what? Weight. For a weight. Weight. Pardon? That's okay. Oh, not a question to me. Perfect. Okay. So uh, I didn't grab mine, I left it over here. So use your weight or a soup can or a water bottle, anything you'd like. All right, team. So the first exercise we're going to do is we're gonna hold our weight. We're gonna hold it at our shoulder and paddle it across to our hip. So shoulder to hip, shoulder to hip. Now this movement, you could use mostly your arms for the lifting, but I want you to purposefully use your core. So tighten up that belly to move the weight from hip to shoulder, hip, to shoulder. And keep breathing out through pursed lips. Good work, everybody. Good, and rest there. Now, did you feel that more in your shoulders or more in your core? Shoulders. Shoulder. Shoulders. Shoulders. So, if you felt that more in your shoulders, that's okay. What I would encourage you to do is really think about tightening up your belly button. Like someone's gonna slap you on the belly. You gotta brace yourself. And, and tighten it on the way up, more so. So start at the other hip now, everybody. And again, tighten that core to lift that weight up and down. Tighten the lift up and down. It doesn't mean you let it go completely on the way down. You just go from tightening to maximum tightening.
Try to get it so that your shoulders are taking less of the strain. Great job, everybody. And rest. Okay, that second time, was that better? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Now, remember that exercise, because we're going to come back to it. And your exercise is you're going to hold the weight in one hand. You're going to put your feet apart. And what we're going to do is we're going to lean forward just to where you can, keeping the back straight. Then you're going to lift the weight up, down, and pull yourself up by pushing through your feet. Okay, so it's down. And again, keep the chest up. I don't want any rounding backs. Pull it up, down, and come up. So again, lean forward from the hips, pull the weight up, down, and pull your whole body up, push through the feet. Down, up, down, up. Down. Up, down, up. Once again, have a quick check. You shouldn't be feeling this in your lower back. Especially if you're standing. Uh, this hinge pattern it's called, meaning bending at the hips, um, is, a, is easier to get the hang of when sitting. Kind of limits where you can move. Um, you want to be really conscientious that you're bending from just the hips. Down, pull the weight up, down, and <laughs> down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and switch arms. Uh. And down, <clears throat> up, down, up. Down, up, 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 down. Up again, tighten through that core, tighten through your legs, pull your body back up, and keep the head and chest up as you bend forward. Pull up, down. Good job, everybody. And rest. Good. So that was exercise number two. Super, super exciting. Now you're going to put your weight uh, just to the side or underneath your chair, somewhere out of where you're not going to uh, bump into it or step on it. <sighs> Sit at the edge of your chair. And if you're choosing to stand, I encourage you to bend your knees. All we're gonna do is fall and we're gonna pump our arms until like we're running in place. Now from ribs down, I want the rest of your body to stay super, super still. Ready and go. The faster you pump those arms, the harder it is. And I would think about crushing a walnut between your bum cheeks. 
Keeping those glutes tight will help you keep the rest of your body still as just your arms go. So maintain that breathing pattern. Pump those arms, gang. Pump those arms. Maintain your breathing. Everything else stays still. Good work. Keep breathing, keep breathing. Last couple seconds. And rest. Catch your breath. Maybe you need to go down into your recovery position. And just focus on breathing out through pursed lips. Good. How's everybody so far? Maybe okay. a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a so so. <laughs> Good. So, most of you, I can mostly only see your heads just as a heads up. <laughs> I'm getting either the uh, from the neck up or the shoulders up for about 80% of you. So, <laughs> That's why I like to check in even more. I'm gonna say there's a reason for that, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough, it's all good. You can't see my feet. <laughs> That's okay, I had um, one of my clients, we were doing a session over Zoom and I said, we were doing the stretch where you look, you reach down towards your toes and he goes, oh, Oh no. And we go, what? He goes, I need to clip my toenails. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot for that. All right. Hopefully we're feeling more recovered. I did want you getting your energy back, getting your breathing under control before starting the next set. Sometimes with our exercises, you got to rest a little bit longer than you think you need to, and a little bit longer than you want to sometimes. And uh, that helps you give more and get more out of the next upcoming exercises. Okay. So, bit of a memory game. I told you, oh, remember this exercise, we're going to come back to it. And we've done three of them. What did we start with? I forget. <gasps> Everyone forgot? There, so long ago. Well, there we go. So it's with your weight or without, depending on the intensity. Uh, start at your hip, actually. And remember, tighten up that core to lift that. Up. Isn't that called a paddle? We are paddling. Except for this particular paddle, we're going a bit slower. And I'm getting you to brace a little bit harder on the way up. And that's just to help um, your shoulders versus paddling in, in a canoe or a kayak. The majority of the core tightening happens on the down stroke because that's when you're pulling the paddle through the water. But for you guys holding a weight in your hands, the point of the most resistance is lifting that weight up. So tighten the lift that weight and down. Tighten the lift that weight and down. Good. And switch sides. So start at your other hip. And we're going up and down. Up and down. Good. 
So remember the smaller that range of motion, um, the less intense it is versus the bigger the range of motion, the more intense it is. So we always wanna find our exercise balance between challenging yet doable. Good, and rest. Brilliant, everybody. And what was our third exercise? Yep, it was pumping the arms. Right. So again, put your weight out of the way. Think about sitting nice and tall and strong, tighten those glutes. I'm going to zip up my pockets because I caught my thumb in one of them last time. <laughs> That's always funny. And pump your arms. Good. Your lower body still and get that upper body moving. Great job, everybody. Go, 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 go. Almost there. Keep going. Breathing out through pursed lips. And then rest. Whew. So again, go into that recovery position if you need. Focus on your pursed lip exhale. And we are going to do that one more time. Okay. Actually, you know what? We forgot an exercise. Mm -hmm. No. We did. We haven't forgotten it. We just haven't done it yet. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> so we've actually got one more exercise to do before we restart the whole series. Yes. Oh, so skip it. Grab your own. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So get your feet apart, my goodness, holding that weight. And we're reaching, not reaching down, but bend forward at your hips, keep the chest up, pull up, down, and pull your whole body up. And come back down again. My goodness, and you were all gonna just let me get away with it. Yep. <laughs> you want to pull yourself up by crushing that walnut between your bum cheeks. Pull up, down, and up. Good. Down slow. Make sure the movement's coming through just your hips. Up, down, up. It's like saying, Joe. The reason why I can't hear you is because I'm not listening. Oh. <laughs> Boy, I'm going to remember this. Pull down just from the hips. This should feel good on your back. And switch arms. And down. Up. Down, pull through your glutes, push through your feet to come up. Bend at the hips, pull up, down, and come up. Down, pull up, down, come up. 
down, up, down, pull yourself up. Down, up, down, pull yourself up. Up, down, pull yourself up. Up, down, pull yourself up. Great job, team. Almost there. Good. Keep that chest up, head up. That'll help keep your rib cage open to help you breathe. And puts a little bit less pressure on your back. And rest there. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, everybody. Now, what was our first exercise? <laughs> um, was it the paddle? Was it the paddle? Wasn't. Or was it? We are going to have to do more brain games, everybody. Or less coordination and warm up so your brains are a little less fatigued. All right, team. Sorry, did someone say something? Yeah, no, just, no. Sorry. Oh, all good. Just I, say, I said you got to have one first. <laughs> there you go. All right, we're going to start with our paddling. It was paddle. <laughs> Then we're going down and up. Good. Remember to tighten on the left. Good. Work team. Good. Make sure you tighten up your core more when you lift that weight up. Good, and switch sides. Let's get up the other hip, and up. Great job, everybody. So remember, the exertion is that lifting up because we're holding a weight. So it is helpful to breathe out through pursed lips. Good. Oh, Lord. You and wonderful. Deep breathing out from first lips. And rest. All right. Do you remember the next one? No. The boxing one? The running in place. Yep. Oh. Got it. <sighs> Tighten up that lower body and pump those arms. Go, 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 go. Great 
job team. That's it. Keep pumping those arms. Keep pumping those arms. Keep breathing up through pursed lips. Keep the whole body still and strong. And rest. Whew. Now put your feet apart. Have the weight in one hand. This is our last exercise. We're reaching, we're leaning down. I don't like saying reaching because that often gets people actually trying to touch and it ends up rounding their back. So just think about bending forward from the hips. Pull up, down, and pull yourself up. Good, down, up, down, up. Go at your pace. Unless you're trying to speed through it, then go at my pace. So swing forward, up, down, up. Swing forward, up, down, up. Up, down, up. Swing forward, up, down, up. Swing forward. Down, up, lean forward, up, down, up, and switch hands. Lean forward, up, down, up, lean forward, up, down, up, lean forward, up, down, up. Lean forward, up, down, up. Lean forward, up, down, up. Great job, team. Lean forward, keep that chest up, up, down, up. So especially if you're standing, guys, really get that chest up so that you're not rounding through your back. That puts a lot of pressure on your back. Especially those of you that have osteoporosis, you've got to be super careful about those movements uh, in your spine. Good work, team. And rest. There we go. Well done, everybody. Awesome, awesome job. Put the weight to the side. And let's get one arm stretching down, the other stretching up. So is there a difference between prositis and arthritis? Yes, big difference. So arthritis is uh, inflammation in the joint capsule. Um, so it's inflammation of the bones. So a joint is where two bones meet. So if you think of your two or more, I should say, sorry. Um, if you think of your knee, you have your thigh bone, your femur, and your tibia, you have your fibula on the outside, um, but it, and it, it does attach. But when you think of primarily the knee joint, it's your tibia and femur. And when people get arthritis of their knee, there's inflammation within that joint capsule. And the bone starts to wear down after that chronic inflammation. Bursitis is inflammation of the bursa. And you guys can switch hands, sorry. I use my hands when I talk and that distracts me from stretching. And what your bursa is, it's this little, um, little sack of fluid uh, that goes underneath tendons of high friction points to reduce friction and fraying of the tendon. 
So in your knee, you have a bursa uh, right underneath your patella tendon, for example, and that patella tendon attaches your kneecap down to your tibia. Okay. That gets inflamed. Um, it's, I mean, it, it is just as painful as bursitis uh, or as arthritis, sorry. And uh, an area that's commonly confused and misdiagnosed for bursitis is in the hip. Is what? Hips. In, in the hip. Oh. Or shoulders too, probably, eh? Or pretty bad. Um, yeah, it's, um, people will tend to get bursitis under their um, supraspinatus tendon, uh, which is one of your rotator cuff muscles that helps you lift it. Um, yeah. Or the long head of their bicep, and that's the bicep that it touches up in the shoulder that helps you lift your arm straight up. So those two tendons um, are more likely to get bursitis than other tendons. Um, stretch your foot up in front of you, and I just realized <laughs> my headphones never turned on, so those aren't actually doing anything. <laughs> And if I sounded a little further away today, that's why. <laughs> okay, I was just wondering because uh, they, they both, well, bursitis takes a long time to get rid of also. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, anytime you have uh, chronic inflammation, um, you can think of it, you can think of it as caught in an inflammation cycle. That's what that chronic piece means, switch legs. So if you think of um, acute inflammation, um, let's say you, you twist your ankle or you sprain your ankle and you, you get inflammation at that joint because um, that's what happens where, where there's an injury is we get that inflammation. And inflammation is an immune response. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use your lungs as an example. So for a lot of you, you have chronic inflammation either in your lungs or in your bronchioles. And when you have a flare up, there is an increase in inflammation. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And so some people with uh, asthma, or um, another example of how smoking can contribute to something like COPD. Um, asthma or smoking causes inflammation in the lungs because inflammation is an immune response. So when that inflammation, and then what should happen is your immune system handles it and inflammation decreases. Same with when anybody gets a cold and they're coughing, there is some inflammation in their lungs. And then when they get better, that inflammation has gone away. Got in, what? in COPD, you are now having this more chronic, more frequent inflammation in your lungs or your bronchioles. And that is now that chronic inflammation is the problem. Your body is caught in that cycle of inflammation. Right. So same with arthritis. You can think of it as um, a confused immune system. Arthritis uh, is permanent? You can delay the onset. You can delay the pain perception. Uh, sorry, not delay the onset. De delay and decrease the decline. So you can better maintain it rather than it get worse. You can get your joint stronger um, so that it's not progressing and you're not feeling as much pain. Uh, and you can do things to manage the inflammation too so that it, it helps it not get worse or it slows down the decline. And I realize I've stopped stretching completely. I'm so sorry. Let's put a leg back behind you. So there's different ways to do that. 
Um, you've got exercise down pat. Exercise is a, in the right amount is a great way to reduce inflammation and to strengthen your body for arthritis, for COPD. Um, and I say the right amount or appropriate exercise, because if you're having a flare up day, you know, your arthritis is really bad and the knees are just killing you. That's not a good day to do a lot of sit to stands. No. <laughs> but it is still good to either get a cloth under your foot and slide forward and back. Okay. Or, or get on a bike or get in the pool. And now you're still getting movement to that area without irritating it. But not putting any load on it. Less load. Um, and then when you're having a good arthritis day, start working it a bit harder. Okay. And weather can not help either, right? Yeah, weather, weather seems to, and there's not a lot of scientific research on that. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence, which means kind of word of mouth, a lot of stories about it. Um, and the theory is um, that when the barometric pressure increases, right. so on a, on a rainy day or right. it's going to rain the next day, right. that increase in barometric pressure, the theory is that it's increasing, you have fluid inside your joints. It's called synovial fluid. It helps lubricate the joint, uh, but we. But the theory is that the increase in pressure increases the pressure of the fluid inside your joint, and that's what the flare up. That's kind of what makes it more painful. Well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Huh. yeah. So that's the theory. Uh, they haven't done a ton of uh, like they like they like to say. Well, there's not scientific research on it but they don't necessarily research everything. Right. Right. There's, there's funding constraints. There's all these different things. Um, but what we do know is that, yeah, most people with arthritis feel worse on a rainy day or the day before. Right. That's important to note. That's right. And if you're feeling crummy, well, then you know, okay, this is a day that I have to adjust my plan a little bit. And, and, and guys, the other really two key things, well, three things for inflammation, chronic inflammation, and that's whether you have arthritis, diabetes, COPD, Crohn's, these are all examples of chronic inflammation. Sleep, so, so important. Uh, and there's different ways that you can improve what's called your sleep hygiene and it's about getting a better sleep and there's different ways to help with that stress stress makes inflammation and therefore all those conditions worse and your uh, diet and by diet i don't mean going on a diet i just mean your nutrition and there's certain things um for different conditions. So there's even some nutrition information out there that's specific to COPD. Um, you know, the things they talk about that, especially for COPD, it seems that dairy and sugar um, are common things that um, increase inflammation in people with COPD. Um, and that's not me telling you not to eat dairy. That's just saying that some of you might find yourself um, if you, by reducing dairy, it helps because dairy um, does increase phlegm. It can. So there's different ways, um, different strategies to help yourself that you are more in control of um, that can assist with your medication plan as well. So awesome. great question there, uh, Rick. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I've got something going on in my right knee, which is arth arthritis. I just don't want it to get worse. It's, I, feel, I notice it going upstairs now. Yeah. So I have to look into it more. Yeah, so getting your leg muscles stronger um, is a super, super important thing to help support that knee and your hip muscles. 
Um, Because sometimes the way we walk or move, that can contribute to an increase in pain. Um, And any way you can strengthen your legs uh, is helpful for arthritis in your knees and hips. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thanks for the info. The exercise piece is really good. Um, and I mean, some, some doctors have more information on the, what I call the holistic approach. So the, looking at lifestyle, yeah. um, and some others just don't, um, have as much knowledge about it, but you could try asking your doctor about, uh, those different strategies from a nutrition standpoint. Um, I did that with my doctor and he referred me to, do they have a dietitian attached to their office? So I still ended up getting help. Well, 35 years of crawling on concrete and through steel vessels didn't help either. (laughs) Fair enough, but you don't have control over that piece, but you do have control over your exercise and what you do now, your nutrition, um, managing your stress levels, those kinds of things. So focusing on what's now in your control um, and not focusing on the things that are no longer in your control. Awesome. Yeah. Good, good to acknowledge what may have contributed, but then just focus on what you can do about it now. Okay. Thank Thank you, Jill. Thanks, Jill. Thank you, Jill. Another great class. Thank you. Have a nice week. Thank you so much. You guys too. I'll see you on Monday. Thanks, Naomi.